Hi, on behalf of Charter Matters and Advice, welcome each and everyone for this wonderful occasion wherein we are going to present our achievements, the efforts that we have put in to this journey of TPM. We have with us our distinguished guests, the majorities, the pillager persons. I would at the very outset request our DMD leader sir to come on to the task. It's an honor now to welcome our chief guest, Mr. Bipin Sani, Executive Director, CI Institute of Quality Bangalore. Mr. Bipin Sani has over 30 years of experience working with premier quality organizations of the country. He has been working as Executive Director, CI Institute of Quality since July 2017. Prior to joining CII, he was CEO of National Accreditation Board of Education and Training, Quality Council of India, where he developed many innovative accreditation schemes. He served QCI for over 18 years. He has represented India in many international forums, including International Accreditation Forum, IAF, Pacific Accreditation Corporation, PAC, and as a member of various national and international committees, including Indian Standards or the Bureau of the Indian Standards. At CII IQ, he has played a key role in development of new product offerings in quality, diversifying into new sectors like healthcare, services, exports, etc. During his tenure, the Institute of Quality has signed many collaborative arrangements with premier national and international bodies for building completeness of the industry. Sir, we are very honored to have you with us. Let's all give up for Mr. Vipin Sani. I also request the one gentleman who has been with us to the ticket day, who has been calling with us and the basic main reason why we are here and what we are going to do, the main force behind us, Mr. Ravi Joshi, our TP consultant, to come on to the back. Thank you, sir. <coughs> May I request our GMD leader, sir, to present a proper case to our chief guest, Mr. Dupin Sani.
You also have a test. CEO of Maple Software, Shilpa sir, Rakhavi sir. Let's give that for Shilpa sir. Manoj Inver sir. RDMD, Sundira sir, that's what I said, they are doing as a scenario speech. Sir, please. Thank you, Murali. First of all, uh, very warm welcome to Sri Sahani, uh, Mr. Ravi San, all the invited guests, my colleagues and friends here. Thank you so much. We have been looking forward uh, to this day and preparing for it over the last two years. So there's a lot of uh, satisfaction that we have gone through a lot of uh, ups and downs and uh, I would say tense moments in order to reach this state. So I have three minutes. <laughs> a lot of things are backed up. So uh, honestly I'll tell you uh, and I think I must have uh, you know mentioned it before to all our MMM team members that uh, how did we actually start at this journey and all? And uh, you know, when you are doing your engineering, you hear these you know phrases of TQM, TPM, and production engineering. So we also had TQM and production engineering. I did not like it at all. Honestly, I thought that it's completely a waste of time. Why are we studying these things? So that was my first brush with uh, all these various things in engineering. And after that, uh, during my MBA, I came across this book on Toyota production system. That also I read because everybody was talking about and talking about 2000s and then Toyota was kind of taking over practically the automobile industry by storm. It had already established itself as one of the leading players, but I think by 2007 or 8, it became the number one car company in the world by selling almost like uh, 10 million vehicles is what I remember. So 2004, 5 again, we were talking during uh, those period about Toyota a lot. So I bought that book, I read it. Again, a lot of it kind of was absurd to me because I couldn't understand it. But then, when practically coming into the field, setting up this whole unit, so setting up a plant is something different. But running a plant is a completely different story. Because setting up, we are all excited about setting up things, we get the best equipments. And probably I would, uh, in our industry today, in, in, in the country, there is no plant like this that exists. Because we have partnered with all the leading companies in the world. All the critical equipments are still coming and being imported. I'd just like to welcome uh, my dear friend Mr. Arvis Raju and also uh, past chairman of CIA Andhra Pradesh. Thank you both of you for uh, taking out your valuable time on a very short process and uh, witnessing this uh, moment with us. Thank you so much. And uh, so setting up the plant was very exciting. But when we came to the running of it, it was again a very steep running curve because the whole team was new, the technology which was here, nobody had a prior experience to run such large capacity furnaces in India. These are the biggest furnaces in the private sector in Manganese alloy. There's only one plant that exists under sale, which is called as Maharashtra Electrosmet Ch Chandrapur, which was taken over by sale because it was not running up to the capacity, and still it's not running up to the full capacity. So, then we had our own, uh, you know, uh, problems and issues in order to run the furnaces uh, when we started. And then there was a period from 2015 onwards when we actually started running the ferro noise. That we were kind of going from one crisis to another crisis to another crisis. So the whole team was always kind of, you know, trying to address one thing or the other because it was a lot of uh, steep learning curve for us. And at that point of time, we started the finest journey and we were discussing and debating a lot about implementation of TPM. Uh, none of us, I would say, in the team would have had experience. Maybe one or two people who have uh, worked in the organization knew about TPM. Even I didn't know about TPM. 
I just read briefly, and I had the. Uh, I didn't know because there was there are so many things. Uh, you know, you have five S, then we talk about six sigma implementation, then you have TPM, TQM, and all those things. But for for a lot of people, it is like a haze. You know, where do you start and where do you begin this journey? So coincidentally, five S probably is the basic step that you take. So we started that thing. But TPM, we had no idea what we are getting into. But the only, I think it was more of a hunch that no, we have to do this because the only thing I wanted that people should not come here in stress and again wake up that there's going to be stress at the workplace. And I think the, the gut feeling that we had that TPM probably would be a very good solution for us to go ahead with proof kind of right. So I think after two years of going through it, understanding it, we realized that. It is much wider in scope than we could have imagined. My only idea was that, you know, we should not be going from crisis to crisis. We should just be having more time to think ahead. That was the basic idea. I did not have any idea or exposure to TPM. Neither did anybody in our team. Uh, so, for that matter, I would say that in the last two years, what we have learned after going through the modules, it has given us a totally different perspective to look at things. And I think most of our TPM members who are part of the uh, MMMs, now when they go to the work floor, they can look at the machine in a very different perspective. And when I also go to the work floor with them, I also have a different perspective at which to look at the workplace. And I think that is a very important thing because uh, in our parent organization, uh, the maintenance organization, you have central maintenance team and then you have the operation team. And this is a continuous struggle between the maintenance team and the operation team that if some breakdown is there, it is your job. It's not my job. And I think TPM more is a cultural change rather than actually you, what you're doing. It is a cultural change. It is more about owning what you are running. And the shift itself is very challenging from uh, except specialized maintenance, everything has to come to the operation team still uh, gives indigestion to a lot of people. And I think still the acceptance uh, takes a lot of time to come because they have not done it before. And the whole concept of working in silos is basically responsible for this kind of a attitude that normally we see in the manufacturing industry. I've seen at my parent plant also, it's the same thing. And here also, it's the same thing for us. But here when we started, the technology has advanced so much because for the same amount of production today here, we have probably one third the manpower as compared to what we have in Raipo. So that gave us a very good advantage that we have a smaller team. We have people from all, uh, you know, uh, there's no legacy here, so everybody is coming from a different background. Why not we try to change this concept? So right from the starting itself, we focused on how we can have more ownership. And I think TPM has aided us in achieving that thing that, you know, and I personally felt that that's the right way to go because once you have that, and I think uh, in the subsequent presentation, we'll be able to show that what has been achieved and how we have been able to achieve it. So first I think, <clears throat> personally I feel it's a cultural change, it's a mindset change, it gives a different perspective and a different class for you to look at things. And the, uh, the, another aspect that I personally felt was, you feel, you take pride in looking at your own workplace and it motivates you to come back again uh, to, you know, make it better. And just for the information of all our invited guests and all, normally in the process industry, the raw material handling section is the worst area because it is so dusty and it is so horrible because you are dealing with all kind of material right from, you know, 0 mm to 50 mm. So there is a lot of minus 3 mm which comes in place and which kind of uh, creates a very horrible environment if proper systems are not in place. So we threw a challenge to our team when we started with TPM during that, I think in the initial uh, few months, we threw a challenge to the team that we want to have lunch when our screens are running. 
that was the challenge we gave it to our team. And I think within a year and a half, they organized a lunch on the streaming platform where coal was being streamed. And that's, that's the transformation that you can achieve. And I think when you have that kind of work environment, it motivates you to come back the next day rather than you feel a burden that when I go back, there are so many problems. So I think apart from cultural change, a big aspect of TPM is you take pride of the workplace that you create. And I think in the MMMs we have been successful in order to achieve that to a large extent. I think our MMM members would feel, I, I'm assuming that they would feel same of what they have created in CHP, RMHS, uh, tapping platform, content rolling machine and the Slack emulation area. So I hope that this journey of MMM has uh, given a lot of exposure uh, and to the tools and application of those tools of our core MMM teams and once we kick off I hope each one of them would probably lead a separate team of people and kind of create this whole environment throughout the organization. Another thing which I realized is that when we started doing this TPM there are so many inputs that we took from this into our expansion as one point lessons and uh, how do we avoid such mistakes. So the third furnace that we are putting up, there's a lot of input and, and all the lessons that we have learned in this last two years, we've brought it into it and hopefully that would be a much better version as compared to the furnace one and two. So with this short uh, address, or I mean, uh, there's a lot that we can talk, but I think I'll leave it for the uh, subsequent presentations where our um, pillar uh, chairpersons would actually uh, do justice and share their journeys. So, thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am, now, I'm going to request our chief guest, Mr. Bidin Sandy, who is in Yali, and share his thoughts. Thank you. 
and strength of business is a requisite part which it takes its own source of growth in business. So fantastic statement, sir. And uh, then guided by the group's ideology, which says we often find ourselves at the crossroads of hardships and compelled to make tough decisions. But we must take decisions ethical in nature and benefiting to people and society in large for the greater. What an amazing, what an amazing philosophy. So that's what it says that the fundamentals of a company are strong like this. And it is backed by ambitious leadership like uh, Mr. Leader. And uh, being a professional, of course, uh, there is nothing that it cannot achieve. And that's how my confidence is generating the way the company has steered itself, especially during the last two years and the very challenging times when Mr. Leader, Mr. Leader will also share it. So that's where my, I'm, I'm very confident that there are many, many more milestones that you can achieve. Uh, as I see that amidst these challenges, the company has been successful in maintaining its growth rate in exports, where it achieved the exports of more than 201 crores, uh, whatever I put together. Yeah, it's more than I think this year's cost to that. It's cost. And, and I think, indeed, in, in fact, even the export loss rate from the GFP. So that three star. Three star. Three star. Three star. So I stand corrected. And even the production has gone up quite a lot, quite a bit. So I have not see the figures now. Maybe these are the figures. Yeah. So uh, just briefly to share you uh, with you also about the CIQ where I come from. Uh, we started a journey uh, of helping the industry uh, in late 80s when the economy was opening up. And uh, CI Institute of Quality was the first center of excellence amid the 11 centers of excellence that today uh, CI has been almost a 30 years of journey. Uh, in this journey, we have had uh, forged collaborative arrangements with many national and international organizations like Japan is the of the Indian Instrument, of which we are also in the EPM, the Union of Japanese Scientists and Engineers, EFQM, Testing Inspection, Certification Council, Borderage Foundation, and many more. So the, the idea is not has been to not reinvent the wheel, but uh, you know move with speed and agility to support the growth of the industry so that, and, and, and to bring in the best practices to enable the industry to reach that international benchmark. So that is what we have been you know, working with. Uh, I also know that the initial trial of the model machine has been a great success and uh, that is the part of the whole company. So that is all the relations with the BPM team and all the people going over the Your uh, help to further propagate this and 
to ensure that you also spread the good, you know, benefits that you have got and encourage other people to come for it. So, uh, at the end, all I can say is that uh, we are there with you in this journey. Anytime, anywhere, we are there with you. And uh, we, as I was discussing with uh, Mr. Nino, that we now need to work collaboratively in AP and in other states also to carry this thought forward. And I would look forward to your support to make it happen soon. And uh, look at your guidance to tell us also how we can even further uh, support the industry. That is what we are doing. So thank you so much for to be there. And uh, I am eagerly looking forward to uh, all the presentations and also visiting the Gamba to see the good work that you have done. Of course, it's a learning for me also. That's a secret. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and needs. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before we would go ahead with the presentations by different uh and members and teams. And it was all the people on the task for people seeing so there and so far. So the team is ready to be done. May I now request
because we all were new for this concept. We were not knowing ABC of TPM. And that was the point where we started thinking, yes, that team was aligned that yes, we also should be going for the implementation. And from there our journey began. Initially, when we started, there were a lot of hiccups. There were a lot of paradigm among us, among many of our team members. Even. We were thinking earlier this TPM is mainly made for automobile sector, not for a conventional manufacturing unit like this. Many were having challenging that it will not succeed. Whatever TPM we have planning for it will not succeed. And it will be difficult for our type of organization to actually implement the concept of it. Yes, that is actually quite obvious and uh, quite natural paradigm which everyone used to have. Because we have seen very few organizations, manufacturing organizations like us who actually have implemented a GPM and have got success. Nevertheless, in CII IQ, Institute of Technology. Initially, Sunil San was there, Sunil Malgi, who was coming here as a GPM consultant. And he started, he began his, you know, the implementation process with the training program on paradigm shift. Because that was the turning point which made us to think that whatever we have been thinking is impossible, that is possible. And with that, we began our journey. No doubt, it took a pretty long time, about two and a half years, to complete our particular journey. We all know why it took, because somewhere perhaps we have selected very big size of Kemba. Also, because of the three layers of COVID, which actually hampered our pace of implementing it. Nevertheless, we got success. We took time, no doubt, but we got a success. And there are times the way uh, what Deiras are also expressed, where I was thinking, you know, that it is not possible that we can have such a turnaround where it is very difficult to stand without the nose mask for even one minute. We can have a lunch. We did that. So all credit goes to the team members who actually made it possible. I also had seen one of the triple M, that is coal handling plant. Before TPM, when we had been going in that area of ground cover, it was very difficult to move. The entire shoot was going inside the accumulation of the coal just there. There, we will take our guest today to visit that triple M also to so that how the transformation has happened, what the situation is as today. And it is very difficult for you to guess that what it was earlier before the implementation of TPM. So we have covered that journey. We have seen the transformation. We have seen that TPM also can give a very good result to a manufacturing company like us. And with that confidence, with that learning model we have for the last two and a half years, I'm sure our journey forward will be very, very smooth and easy. Why I was eagerly waiting for this? Because after seeing so many achievements, I was thinking why to you know, make it constant to only triple M, this four G four years. Why not to roll it out across the organization so that organization can get more benefit? And I'm sure that the team, the way they have got developed, all our MMM members, the chairman and vice chairmen of our all headquarters, we can implement that very effectively. We can achieve all the targets, whatever we get from management or we set for ourselves. Though the journey is gone, but at least we have begun. We have started that long journey. 
and with each milestone, achieving different milestones of it, we'll be getting more confidence, more our morale also will be going very high, and there will be a big transformation overall within two to three years' time to see the changes what we get in our company. And we believe that, as Sanis have told that, we should set an example for the others. They should also get motivated to see that how TPM can be a game changer for us, for any company. And I'm sure that we will be able to achieve it, sir. It may take some two years or three years' time, but I'm sure that with this team, with this motivation, the way we are implementing it, we will be able to achieve it. So thank you very much for coming here. Thank you very much to all our guests, to all our members, to come here and see the dream day for me at least to go for the keyboard. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for sharing your experience and the journey of the year the last couple of years. Moving ahead, we will be requesting all the major achievements and the presentations. Before that, we also have a presentation by our team with me as well as sir. We have requested our DMD Indian Services to give a good presentation and share it with us. Sports, achievements, and what you should see
once again to all of you. Let me just take you through this presentation, especially for our invited guests. Most of you are familiar with it. Uh, but uh, Mr. Sahani and our invited guests, I just take you through this journey. Uh, are you able to see it? So this is just a brief about uh, SADA Group, uh, Aver Company, SADA Energy and Minerals Limited. It's a listed entity on board BSC and NSC. And under SADA, we have a couple of subsidiaries. Uh, SADA Metals and Alloys are also one of the major subsidiaries under uh, SADA Energy and Minerals. Apart from that, uh, we are, are having a growing portfolio of hydro projects. Madhya Bharat Power Corporation is our biggest hydro expansion which also we recently commissioned last year. It's a 96 megawatt uh, power plant that got commissioned. Uh, incidentally, both Sada Metals and Madhya Bharat Hydro Project in Sikkim started in the same year. But it got completed after 10 years of commissioning of Sada Metals. So that's the kind of challenge that is there in constructing hydro power projects. Then we have Parvatiya Power, that's also, that was the first venture into hydropower, 4.8 megawatt, uh, that's in Uttaranchal, Sada Metals, Sada Global, <coughs> under which we have uh, coal mining interests in Indonesia. So this is a brief. Apart from that, uh, we have a growing portfolio of uh, dairy products under a Vachan brand name, which is predominant in uh, Central India, Madhya Bharat, Maharashtra, and slowly its uh, reach is spreading. Under that, we have all uh, products related to dairy. We have our own milk, ghee, butter, dahi, lassi. So we are basically competing under that with the giants like Amul and all. Um, and after starting that business, we realized that our business is much simpler than running a dairy business. So uh, this is again, uh, currently we have 180 megawatt power plant, uh, 236 MV ferroy furnace, investment till date, I will not go into all those things. Uh, we were a two star, recently only we got uh, uh, a three star export house. So there are five stars which the central government gives to any business depending upon what is the percentage of, what's the actual amount of exports they do. So three star means you are above 100 million dollars in your exports and four star is above 500 million dollars of exports and 5 star is above 2 billion dollars in exports. So this year we got a uh, 3 star export status. Um, so this is just about uh, the, the brief about our plant that uh, we are the largest uh, ferroloy furnace in the country and the reason uh, where most of the furnaces are in the range of 16 MVA, 9 to 9 MVA to 16 MVA, we decided to take the jump to 36 MVA basically. It's written 33 MVA but our capacity is 36 MVA and the basic reason was that when we started this plant was that smaller plants won't see a longer duration and it's we have to go and scale up in order to remain relevant in the business because today when we see the history of ferroloy industry across the globe where uh, uh, South Africa, uh, Europe, France, uh, Japan and all these uh, countries, they started with smaller furnaces, but today only few plants are surviving which have completely scaled up to the limit. The rest of all the plants are shut down. So there are plants where they have 50 furnaces ranging from 2 MVA up to 80 MVA, but today only the 80 MVA one are surviving, the rest everything is shut down. <coughs> Other many plants have shut down which were of smaller capacities. And then we have the casting and just to point out that initially when we <clears throat> started, so we were also quite new. Casting, we had one casting machine for two furnaces. But I think today ours is the only plant in India which has direct casting machine right connected to the tap hole. That doesn't exist in India. There are only two other plants that I am aware of. One is in Australia called as Tempo, and the second one exists in South Africa, which is under uh, South 32. So these are the only two plants which have direct casting from a ferroloy furnace. And obviously we have the captive power. When we started this plant, 
that point of time we were the first one to bring in captive power and ferro. So just for the information of our guest, Andhra Pradesh actually is the birthplace of ferro alloy industry in India. And right next to here, FECOR used to be the first company which brought ferro alloys technology to India, which is in Vijayanagaram district. So this is the birthplace of ferro alloys in the country. And the credit goes to a couple of business houses, two, three of them, which actually, you know, most of the people uh, have actually joined these companies, which I would say are institutions which have, you know, generated a whole breed of ferro experts in the country today. We were the only one to bring in a captive power plant. At that point of time, power cost of the state was one rupee cheaper than us. It was two rupees 40 paisa. And when we projected our captive power plant, it was supposed to come up 3 rupees 50 paisa. By the time we commissioned the project, the entire southern region was a power crisis. There was no power available. Similar situation, 50% uh, power uh, holiday was given. And after that, the state's power became one rupee expensive than us. We never thought that we will see this summer again because there was such a lot of capacity addition in the whole thing but I think the disruption of COVID and a lot of other factors in the war has brought again a power crisis in the country. So today, ours is the only plant running in the state though at an expensive power at 100% capacity, rest everybody is at a 50% capacity. So we always thought that for bigger furnaces you need to have your own quality power because almost 50% of our product cost is power consumption. So this is just the journey uh, from 2017-18, we commissioned the plant in 13-14. From that point onwards, uh, our nine months this year results are almost 755. As per our finance department, right now I cannot declare the full year results because we are a listed entity. But you can gauge that it's going to be much higher than this this year. Who are our major customers? Japan. We export almost 50 per 54% of our products to Japan. Then it's uh, UAE, Thailand, Taiwan, Turkey. But overall, it keeps changing. But these are the five major export countries. And we actually export to more than 35 countries directly or indirectly. So these are our marquee customers. We supply to practically all the major steel mills uh, in India. So we supply uh, exports also. Japan uses a lot of our material because uh, the Japanese product quality is very, very specific. So it's just a sample of the companies that we supply to. Uh, rewards and recognitions, we got a two-star export house in the initial years, now we got a three-star export house uh, status. And um, one of our recent achievements was to get a four-star rating. Uh, not a four-star rating, actually when we started, we wanted to get a five-star rating. Uh, for the first three years, we only got three-star rating. I think then we got a four-star rating, and this year we got a five-star rating, but CIM has changed the norms. So now it is not uh, any star rating, it is uh, bronze, silver, and gold, and platinum. So the category is now people are continuously getting five-star ratings. So what beyond that? So now they came up that, okay, if you repeat a five-star rating, you get it to gold. If you have three or four years of five star rating to get into a platinum or something like that. So we achieved, we got a five star rating but we still got a silver. Uh, next year definitely we will get a gold. This is our quality policy and TPM policy. I will not go into the EHS policy or QEHS policy. I will just read out the TPM policy. Uh, what we are achieving by adopting TPM, we want zero defects, zero breakdowns, zero accidents and zero losses. Effective process ownership that I spoke about with total employee participation, training involving empowering the people and encouraging Kaizen activities, safe, clean and pleasant working environment. Pleasant is very important because today we are continuously in stress for one reason or the other and one of the major reasons of stress that comes is through work. So we want our people to really have a good time and enjoy the challenges of working rather than managing the crisis. So pleasant working environment for higher employee morale, continual improvement of productivity and reduction in cost, improved customer satisfaction by delivering quality products and services on time. 
So this is the best. Uh, so recently we also participated in the newly launched CII Industrial Safety Excellence Awards because we got the best safety performer uh, uh, recognition in this thing. So as I mentioned, a uh, couple of awards after our journey in TPM and I think we all should be proud about that because coming from a process industry, bagging these awards in competition to pharmaceutical industries, giants like l &T, is not easy. So we should definitely, you know, really feel proud about this achievement. And this is all because of our journey in TPM. We got uh, the silver award for innovative category Kaizen competition in 2021. Uh, this is for uh, which particular FFM? CHP. CHP got this award. Uh, National Kaizen competition, we got a platinum award. Uh, this was for innovation category. I think this was for RMHS. This was for RMHS where the team entirely created a new quadriceptor for, uh, uh, for feeding the product into the ground hopper. Uh, star champion innovative category again national kaizen competition 2021 this was for rmhs okay. breakthrough kaizen this is the this is the most difficult category of award uh, to get the highest category breakthrough kaizen we got the first award in this category for breakthrough kaizen for our cricketing plant so a big, big round of applause for each and every one of you This is the vision and mission of Sada Metals to become the most preferred, sustainable and largest manganese oil producer in India. Mission is to build globally competitive and best in class products and deliver highest value to our stakeholders and communities. To innovate and inspire people for environment and resource conservation. This is a very important part because uh, based out of, we did a, we did a, how much time do I have? Five more minutes, I'll wrap it up in two. So, uh, this is a very important aspect of our whole journey because we took a three day campaign of waste to wealth and how do we, so we, all, all uh, key members, we went outside, we stayed two days, we had a consultant who's been associated with us uh, for a long time. How do we convert our waste? Because as we go forward, a lot of waste will be generated to wealth. So, out of that, we came up with a three, four year journey through which we are now going to put up one another line which will be the first of its kind in India and it's going to be disruptive for the traditional industry. So we are almost on the finalization of that line where we will and we will start with consuming our own slag into a very high value added product. And I personally feel that in a commodity industry there are only two ways you can be ahead of the curve. One is by scale and second by disruption. So this is going to be a very classic example of a disruption in our industry where most of the people, uh, the cost curves of those people versus ours will be very different and this is going to be a very big edge for us. So that is, uh, sustainability is a very important part. We are uh, coming up with a couple of measures in order to have uh, sustainability measures built into our product and reduce our carbon footprint. What are the values, tenacity, trust, transformation, teamwork and timeliness. So five Ps is what we have chosen there. I would like to point out uh, our transformation where we are agile and transforms ourselves into better us each and every day by Kaizen to improve our business operations through continuous learning and innovation. And Genshi Genbutsu practicing on-site hands-on experience by going to the source, finding facts, building consensus, making correct decisions and achieving goals as fast as possible. Um, why TPM? I think I have already described, so I will just skip this slide. I have already said basic things, why we want to adopt TPM and why it should be an ingrained part of any manufacturing setup, not just our, I would say any manufacturing setup. So these are the eight pillars of uh, TPM. Jishu Rosen, Kogetsu Kaisen, plan maintenance, quality maintenance, development management, education and training, safety, health and environment and office. So all the people sitting in the support function in the city office, you need to get ready because office TPM is going to kick in now once we do the kick off. So I think we do, we have already started this journey. Mr. Chandrasekhar is already here, probably he'll explain about office TPM. 
and how EPM is just not related to production process, but any process where there is certain steps that are, you know, a decision needs to take or a file needs to go, and how you can cut losses there. So I think that's going to be interesting because ultimately the movement of paper for taking approval or let me call it the whole process of checks and balances and bureaucracy delays the decision making process in the organization. So this is going to bring in that efficiency. And we do have the various uh, pillar chairs. Uh, and uh, this was our organization master plan. I think we started in 2019. And in uh, April of 2022, we are looking to kick off. We got delayed by a year, I would say, because of COVID. And also because of the challenging MMMs that we took. So these were the two main reasons. Nevertheless, uh, I think we have come here those absolutely strong. This is the most important slide for everyone. So these are the places where, these are the only four areas which we took up. Mudgun, slag granulation, coal handling and raw material handling. And two important aspects, we were having close to we were having close to 70 breakdowns in these four areas on a monthly basis, which today are absolutely zero. And that is a big achievement because this, this, I mean, these were the areas where we were struggling and something or the other was happening and everybody was just busy firefighting. So this is the impact of TPM. When you have 70 breakdowns, emissions team, everybody is just spending their energy to, you know, we're going from one breakdown to the next breakdown. And just see in these four areas, we have been able to save one crore rupees per annum. So this was a loss which was not visible to us. But when we started getting into the details of it, we realized that this is a loss. It could be an opportunity loss or a hard cost loss, but it is a loss. So in these four areas, where we can save one crore, when we roll it out across the organization, I'm very sure it's not going to be less than 10 crores that we are losing here in the system. And this 10 crores easily is going to add to our bottom line. Apart from making us more competitive in the market, it is also going to make our lives easier. When you don't have breakdowns, practically you are just looking for a different challenge. So it's going to make the whole journey very interesting for all of us. Now this is my last slide. This is just our 10 year plan that we carved out, I think, over a couple of iterations and discussions and uh, that three days. So, our, our objective is down the line 2030, we want to be at least a half a million ferroloy production capacity here in this location as a single location plant. And we also have, um, so this is getting commissioned right now. So, we have furnace one, one and two. 36 MV and other furnace is coming on stream in 22. We want to add another furnace by 2024. Now this is going to be a quantum leap for us. From 36 MV to 81 MV. 81 MV is the largest size of furnace that exists in the world today. We don't have anything like this in India. But this is going to be a very big challenge because it requires a lot of process uh, streamlining in terms of raw material. And that's something which is beyond our control. So here we have to see how we jump from 36 to 81 MBA. I think the way we are going ahead, we'll find solutions uh, of uh, running these large furnaces. But that's it. And this is our mineral mold line which is going to come up. So first we are starting with the 25,000 tons where we are converting our entire waste into fiber, which can be, uh, which has a lot of uh, potential both in the domestic as well as the export market. Being in Vizac helps us to also tap this tap into the Southeast Asian market as well. So our plan is that at least majority of the slag that we are generating will convert it into a fiber. So that's that's our 10 year uh, plan in 2030. And I think that's the end of my presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the journey. Now we come to the, uh, the core ingredient of this. That in here. We have a military person presenting their achievements and their processes. Start with, I would be interesting. We have this was the schedule. So 
change step one. Change step one. Cleaning with meaning identification of abnormalities and classification of abnormalities, rectification of abnormalities and dead removal and audit. This is some of the images for our cleaning with meaning. In till now we have identified this mentioned abnormalities and we have attended all the abnormalities till now. First we have started with the identification of seven types of abnormalities and these are the some of the examples we have put in for the minor flows, unfulfilled basic condition, hard to access, source of contamination. So some examples we have kept here. These are some of the examples for the abnormality rectification. On vibrating steel floor, there were so many earth strips were lying on the floor. It was obstructing our men uh, movement and it was difficult to clean the area. We have rerouted the earth strip and now this area is free for the man movement and easy to clean. Bottom one is the one fire was both was the damage condition that we have replaced. This is the second example, uh, we see one tailored or coal handling plant. Uh, guard was in such a manner, it was difficult to duplicate. Every time before duplication, we have to open the guard. And Chedis junction box was installed on the guard. That guard we have modified and we have provided one small door and we have relocated the JDSS junction box and bottom one is the DDDS2 side source of contamination that we have sealed with conveyor belt. This is top one is for the unsafe places. Step was too high, we have provided two steps for easy lightning and bottom one is the unnecessary and non-urgent items that we have removed from all the our people and area now there is no unnecessary and non-urgent items this is the step one audit summary J step two J step two major trouble in identification of source of contamination and hard to access Restoration and improvement, removal of source of contamination and hard to access and audit. In JS2 journey, we have gone through one point lessons, timely audit and daily campaign. This is the same example as we have discussed earlier for the hard to access. This is the example for identification of source of contamination. In our coal handling plant, there are two dump hoppers in spare condition, dump hopper number 3 and 4. So uh, there were two drain pipes that provided and by that two drain pipes, material was falling on the floor and these two vertical pipes were in the center of the working area. So man was hitting to that pipes. So we have relocated that drain pipes. Now all post pillar is dumping directly on the BC1 and this area now safe to move. For the restoration and improvement, we have gone through analysis of source of contamination and hard to access, brainstorming and improvement plan. This is one example for hard to access, hard to inspect and hard to duplicate. Now, uh, on vibrating skin mortar and pulley area, we have to climb through our structure and it was difficult to duplicate, inspect. So we have prepared one movable trolley with lockable wheels. So now it is easy to shift by one man power and by this we have achieved risk priority number has been reduced from 5 to 1, manpower requirement reduced from 2 to 1 and leasing time reduction 
has been reduced from 15 to 2. For this missing time reduction, we have taken out, taken out one pipe from the guard. So now we need not have to open the guard to grease it. This is the example for hard to. Uh, example of hard to clean. On BDPS2 backside, material was falling on the gratings. Uh, we have provided backside one conveyor belt ceiling and these gratings we have replaced with checker plate. So, by this cleaning time has been reduced from uh, 30 minutes to 5 minutes. Means 83 percent time reduction we have achieved. This is one more example for hard to access, hard to inspect and hard to duplicate. On the organ, uh, as shown in the left bit, uh, we were using this type of tap. So now we have provided platform with handrails. So now it is easy to access, easy to inspect and easy to duplicate. And by this, we have reduced our risk priority number from 4 to 2 and cleaning time has been reduced from 5 to 2 minutes. In hard to access, we have total identified 341 locations and we have addressed all these 341 locations. This is the example for removal of source of contamination. As I have discussed earlier, EDPS2 backside was open. So now we have provided conveyor belt curtain. Now uh, our no material is coming out from this screen backside. And by this, our cleaning frequency in a month has been reduced from 90 to 30. This is the second example for removal of source of contamination as we have discussed earlier. For the source of contamination, we have identified 1050 locations and 1049 we have attended. One is pending, its action plan is in next slide. This is our MDHS hydraulic pump. Its suction is leaking and we have ordered our necessary part and very soon we will attend it. This is the audit summary for step 2. JH step 3. JH step 3 is mainly preparing tentative standards and implementing tentative standards and audit. This is the example for the cleaning, duplication, inspection and tightness. For example, this we have put here. And all the check sheet we have included Telugu language to uh, easy understanding of our team. This is the CLIT map we have prepared for every triple M's. This is the example for the some of the indications we have made on the machine. This is the training on implementation of tentative standards. These are some of the visual control and indication. This is some more examples for the visual control and indication. This is some more uh, images for the visuals. And this is the activity board for our all day-to-day -day activity, planning and achievements. These are the check sheets we have made for our Triple M members. Whenever our Triple M members were going on the field, we were filling these check sheets and by this we have <coughs> reduced our CLIT time. This cleaning, lubrication and inspection time as mentioned in this graph we have reduced cleaning time by 41%, lubrication time reduced by 60% and inspection time has been reduced by 70%.
This is the step three audit summary. This is the overall equipment efficiency. We are still trying to improve uh, much, and these are the OE for our all triple M's. RMSs, CNP, Mudgun and Drill Machine, and Slide Renovation. This is the PQCDSM table for before starting of PPM journey and as on date. This is the comparative, some of the major targets we have taken based on PQCDSM and we have mentioned present status here. JF step 4, we have started our journey. JF step 4, major covering, identifying modules, preparing basic modules, educating them, uh, modules, understanding the relations with the defect and breakdowns, and preparing technical training center. These are the major steps covered in the step 4, and Ravi San has completed its training first part. Thank you so much. So in total, there are 6384 abnormalities we identified in 
but still uh, the opt-in plan is to further improve its life. By this process, the mean time between failure also has increased. And we have done uh, equipment tracking with the industry. The process of the zero opt-in down, uh, so we have done equipment tracking and uh, based on the criticality, we have uh, formatted the maintenance procedures. There are 986 uh, equipments in the plan and in particular in the machines, there are 81 equipments. 46 equipments in the uh, and 7 equipments in the television and uh, 28 uh, equipments in the armatures. There is no uh, S class category. So, this is a procedure we followed uh, to identify the correct maintenance practices because uh, there are different types of maintenance practices and this is a procedure we followed. So, this is a uh, so the CDM uh, the equipment uh, which are having the parts uh, out, which can be uh, most likely can be predicted are uh, not in the TDM, the time based maintenance. The equipment which uh, most likely cannot be predicted, they are in CDM and this is the procedure we followed in the zero breakdown uh, process. And this is the case for NTP we discussed in the uh, previous slide. This is one more uh, case that uh, we have uh, followed to eliminate the breakdown of the screen cloth uh, structure. You can see on the left hand side the screen cloth structure it is getting failed uh, in every once in six months. So we have that case and we include the material and we change the material and because of which uh, the life has increased to 12 months, still it is running. We targeted for 12 months but still it is running. This is the Kaizen summary. Total 141 Kaizen identified in triple machines. And all are implemented. And this is a step 3 approach. So, in step 3, we have formatted alternative standards for the maintenance procedures. This is the maintenance map. So, we have done uh, equipment tracking. Then, uh, we for formatted the maintenance plan. That is, uh, you can see the frequency and uh, you can see the for every month, against every month. So, uh, against every equipment, we formatted the checklist, you know, what to check, and a what frequency. And this checklist we are filling every month, and we are following it. Same thing. And we followed the five W O one H principle, and who, has, who will do the activity and uh, what activity he has to do and uh, what tool he has to use and how he has to do and how much time it takes. This is all standardized now. So even uh, any person can do, go and do this maintenance. And we are the process of step 4. See step 4 we are total inspection of quality function and this is the sequence we are following in step 4. Let's prepare the general inspection uh, sheets to identify the minor flow and identify the equipment affecting the quality functions and identify the quality components, updating the JH and PM checklist and QM component matrix. So now we are the process of step 4. Thank you. Now, setting up the plan to the basic condition would not suffice the need of the organization. Losses needs to be addressed. KK pillar, which basically looks into these losses, and that is some losses will be presented by the vice chairman of KK, Mr. Shetudan Singh.
Sir, master plan for organization, ecosystem for daily pillar, inspection way of reducing the losses, understand the system, and try to find out the various causes of the fault. This is the master plan, consisting of various steps, and it is showing the, showing the period from uh, last year, around 20 months, we are promoting the survey. Focus improvement. Focus improvement basically to improve the things at various level. These steps are helping us. Select team and topic is the step zero, then understand the situation, then expose the eliminate development is analyze cost. Analyze process is the basic tool to know the counter measure. Plan improvement. Part improvement is to be done. After that, implement implementation is to be carried out. After completion of this implementation, we have to check this and consolidate them. Index. AG step 0, what has to be a security? Then understand situation, expose the world, then properties and eliminate, analysis the process and plan improvement. And improvement plan, check result and consolidate again. Step 0 basically to select the uh, team and topics. With the uh, you know, five others, two years, three activity, cross personal team. Then this is the fourth segment of our people and team. Uh, our the parties are, Mr. Bhikati Bhani is the chairman and we have picked up the results from our people and team segment. KG is step 1. Understand the situation. This is the basic uh, expert step 1. Identify high losses process, measurement of different losses, and basis on the baseline data setting target. It enters through methodology also, sorting of the major losses based on time based, cost based, and weight based losses. Here, the uh, applicable losses are so out of that 14 losses are applicable in our segment out of 16. And these losses are classified in the CSP, RHS, LCM, and PHS, when you the triple and four segment. Here, example of measurement of applicable losses, RHS losses seen under the heading of magnetical, electrical, instrumentation, we have captured the data of the voice. Our benchmark, like set up and change over losses, in our MID plan, DG system, we have a thing to 42 hours in a month or 40 days in a month, increment level losses in 5 and 4 days in a month. These two are major concerns for us, which we have taken for priority. Step 2. In step 2, identification of seven types of abnormalities, restore degradation and correct the uh, minor flaws, establish basic equipment condition. These seven types of losses, starting with the minor flaw, unfortunate basic condition, artificial. With the help of this activity, we are uh, supporting to our GST. Here, uh, grading has been uh, replaced by the chakram date and this guidance has been done by our team. Clean time has been reduced by 83%. Here, in the MPD North of area, lot of source of contribution has been found. We have provided contentment, contentment box and restricted the source of contamination. In the uh, double data by the street, in the rear side, we have provided the uh, used conveyor belt and restricted the source of contamination. And the unit that required once in a part of the of life in a day. Step 3. The analysis of the process, process, which is the major tool for us, identify and analyze process, apply analytical technique for analysis, conduct various equipment for solution. Here we would like to emphasize this uh, charge, value charge of soil. This center and change process is the major concern for us, 342.63 hours, and second is the equipment driver, which is 135.75 hours. We concentrated, concentrated our last four, five months, these two losses. Here, this uh, stratification of losses shown in the various four uh, part segment. This is also 3.2 hours details of activity cleaning of ground hopper and basically 
screen, find number, repositioning, get the high quality conveyor, etc. Et so now our target to reduce these losses. This is the target we have taken. Analytic, analytical technique for bottleneck, why by analysis, why choking up basically, why uncontrolled term accumulation, why building up basically, why by non-inform material. Actually, we were not getting the free flow of, free flow of the material on the machine. For that, we did the diesel. We had modified the basic basis of this uh, grizzly, swing the uh, boxes has been provided, and two unbalanced motors have been provided, which help us to get the free flow of the material through the conveyor and reduces the lot of timing, uh, idle time time into the ability of the equipment. Plan equipment. Anything that we see in the site, we have to select the point and then plan for improvement. Through make improvement proposal and prepare drive. Compare cost effectiveness and identify the optimum source. Check possibility. And this we have cost benefit analysis we have done. For the resilient system, we have capital investment of around 5 lakhs, for the management, and 7.5 lakhs is the overall saving. Earlier we plan for improvement. Now this is the area we are in, uh, implementing the improvement. Implementation of improvement perform various trial run, providing training on improved equipment process and operation condition. This is very important. What we did is we are capitalizing, we are trying to train people to move further. What big losses? We spoke about uh, already spoke about the resilience system. We are 159 hours per month as we come to almost zero level to get the free flow of the material. Second task for in the ground number fabrication system we have provided VFD. Through VFD we are regulating the flow of material. Third one is the, in the fiber end conveyor. Some obstruction has been observed which has been clear which help us to uh, clean and reduce from 32 almost 5 minutes. Two, two big losses. As uh, Michael is also shown earlier, this uh, lateral structure provided is the double decker uh, diabetic system, which is giving very good life like that. Uh, we have already uh, provided this one and our, almost 14 months uh, as over. It is uh, still under observation. Tizen summary this 41, 141 Tizen is the total CHP is 70. RMHS 49, MDHS 22. That is the seat for various segment. Step 6. This is the check point. What we did the implementation of various equipment, evaluate result as per the timeline, check whether target is achieved or not. It did not start in the uh, step 3 again. Check list. Check list. Here we like to say, we like to say, this building system is having 3 for 2 hours. Hours. It has been reduced to 81.7. And this equipment can work in our four segment for 30 hours approximately. It has been reduced to 3 hours. So these two things we have considered and uh, put a lot of effort and this is the result. And it comes under a statistic check result. And uh, the scientific way of uh, analyzing the thing, Pyramid chart, it is also showing. First line is three point is 2. This is the center time change over losses. Second is the equipment federal losses. In after that, it is showing equipment federal losses zero and it is showing uh, around 81, uh, 81.87, which is considered reduced. Step 7, consolidated. Consolidated, prepared the expansion and work standard. Main thing is that train operator and operators to succeed the result. This is the basic thing. We have all the KD steps, things. Consolidated gain. 7.58 lakhs, 0, setup time 0, and background also 0. This is the result we got it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, safety is the basic necessity available to all modern conditions. And to explain this, may I invite the EHS Miller Chairman, Mr. Sudhi Bhaskar.
to operate. You see, you need to for accent. So you can uh, you see that how do we do and induction for real analysis. And all these things lead to identifying unsafe condition, unsafe actions and whatever we have procedures like safety manuals and all. We give education, training and all. So apart from that we take bottom measures and preventive measures. So safety monitoring, petroleum and as I told you behavior based safety. This behavior based safety and we go for any inspection by other party members. So they observe, they wait and they monitor the person how he is acting. And if any the good like wearing BPs, we appreciate him. And if any part, then we will rectify their itself by consulting the persons. And I think we can say list of major and minor accidents and safety problems. And we do conduct training on various aspects like work permit system and behavior based system like work permit audits. So all these things lead to create awareness. So these are the two pieces of training we are conducted like my SAP. And not only classroom training, we go on the field and we can get activity based safety training programs. And these are some number of and as I told we will evaluate and randomly how they absorb the work training we have given. Likewise we have conducted almost all 7, 18 and, uh, participants were there and we conducted random set of 34 persons over there. Like mock tests, these are all create awareness, emergency, in case of emergency, how the people has to do without any budget practices. And these are some features like how do we have teams based on our incident we go, based on teams we do it, like trippings, sleepings. So this is a bit before and after, you can see that. And exams of behavior based how the people behave. So we will it on the spot, we will not wait. So these are the some unsafe conditions and the So this accident and almost all on major accidents. So health monitoring, like purpose health monitoring, if we do conduct like no, providing appropriate PPs based on the activities and we do counseling if they fail to wear all these things and this type of one workplace exposure monitoring we, we do conduct annual medical checkup that is one of the activity and ergonomic point of view yes this is a one, uh, critical activity that the four to five people used to poke the material and grease So we do uh, risk assessment on the activity, how the risk assessment for that. So this, this is, uh, earlier people used to poke the material, three to four people involved in that. This is the thing. So number of people, two people and 400 times a shift they have to poke the total grizzly by conducting the, this sky channel. So almost all it came to one because one person and he need not go for every time because the grizzly was the faculty. So you may go for just inspection for personal. Now this was reduced, the risk was reduced to one. And these are answer conditions, we will not wait for any answer condition that need to be rectified on the spot immediately. So we will not have any pending activities from answer classes. And thank you, sir. Thank you. Now the focus will shift to customer satisfaction with adherence to quality index, which is basically the primary need of any organization. And to take us to the quality journey of TPM, may I invite the QM Pillar Chairman, Mr. Chitranjan Sahu.
complex and m is to minimize to zero for certain complex and number uh, out of specification of production or m is reduction of out of specification production then time of time for analysis and standardized time for analysis a total number of sample for analysis and reduce the number of sample for analysis this is just for some things with all mmm members this is the master plan and the main function uh, main object object of our gm pillar is to minimize uh, to customer complaints with zero and defect should be minimized and the so this is the target and achieve a target target this is the master plan is for the step one confirm the present status step two for query matrix step three for survey and analysis for all conditions step four is study to guide and register non features so there the targets reset and achieve this is the uh, index gm step one step two step three and step four the output step third we have list and step four is process This step one approach, program step one, confirm quality standards, flow charts for each process, and survey and subsequent of quality data. This is quality standards. Here, this is the raw data, raw data requirement and the grade and the specification of the required raw materials for selecting the finished products. As for the selectable materials, these are the the three, four, four types of grades are available. Which Certain specific are manganese, silicon, iron, and phosphorus, and same way as quartz with minimum antimony percent, and the nitrocans, coke and coal, and dolomite. This is quality standards for finished products. So we are producing prime materials, chips, and fines. Prime material only, uh, depending on the size, ten to hundred and ten to fifty. Manganese minimum sixty five percent and silicon sixteen percent. So on the basis, the uh, specification and for thermal, for uh, the minimum sulfur is seventy five percent, and silicon is one point five percent. This is quality checkpoints for the final process. Incoming raw material, <coughs> chemical element analysis, size analysis, and RMS beam sample, moisture analysis, depth sample and slag meter analysis, and dispersed material grade. And Grade analysis and size analysis, and quality checkpoint in power plant process, incoming coal, the moisture analysis and sieve analysis, and coal bunker analysis, moisture analysis, sieve analysis, size of bias, this is loss of units. This is the example flow chart of each process. This is the one process for analysis procedure is repeated step by step. But for all elements, this is for. This is quality analysis of incoming raw materials. <coughs> this is one example for uh, uh, manganese ore, which contains manganese deposition and manganese uh, quality and phosphorus quantity. The first one is manganese is uh, within acceptable limit, and phosphorus also in acceptable limits. This is quality analysis of cutting materials. The in first uh, first class green green light is the minimum requirement is five, but we are getting. Uh, Only, uh, there are one except the two or three types. Every time we are getting as per specification, and sulfur also only once, except once every time we are getting this specification. And carbon also one or two times that the uh, deviation or the rest of the time it is only uh, specification. This is customer complaint. Or, I mean, uh, order versus complaint. This is order versus the upper line is the order and the. जो रेड कलर ये ब्राउन कलर है ये नंबर ऑफ कंप्लेंट्स एंड सेकंड पर ये रिजोल्यूशंस ये रेड कलर है ये रिजोल्यूशन के लास्ट लास्ट रे अंडर द प्रोसेस 
this is a fact that in last year we have some uh, carbon deficiency and carbon complaint. So this is carbon related benefits that we are we are showing here. This is the how we are visually visually for quality complaints in export and domestic. This is for export export uh, at the end on the input of uh, small QC and marketing and third party analysis. The uh, market and people are solving the problems at the end. Uh, this is the uh, resolution of uh, domestic complaints. So that here also at the end third party analysis is, is final and binding. This is step two pay matrix. So this is the defect related to rate. So these are certain points where we can uh, defect may occur. There are some different steps where defect may occur. And the second time is product defects. Product defects last, there is only size analysis and the uh, porosity depends on the spanking fairness and the last three points is the size and the loading. This is survey of core and conditions and survey of analysis of core and conditions. Core and conditions First one is core impression, second division wise survey, third core impression preparation to for defective points. This is core impression, a man machine material method. So here only uh, there is a better chances of defect in machine, that is the red color we have depicted, the elimination, accumulation of material in disturbance. This is a division wise survey of core impression. The so material is processing some different activities are there from grizzly to HGPS2. So, which we may have got both machine in machine related problems, material related problems in deep mass. And in method, so every activity, which method and where problem may occur. This is a highway analysis. This is a, uh, this is a problem for carbon analysis. If highest content will go to condensed board, then there is a chance of carbon deficiency. So to reduce the uh, reduce uh, that that YOA analysis we have done it, less than six percent of highest going to condensed, so the carbon deficiency is very less. So this is the uh, so for that purpose this is the YOA analysis. This is for and person preparation of defective points. So here only there are four points where uh, standard must follow. The cross, the, the three, three, four points where the cross is uh, simple is there, the standard not followed. So that it defects the other thing. This is countermeasure for restoration. Least preparation for deficiency in the final product. Second, countermeasures. Check and restore equipment conditions, equipment guidance and preparation. <coughs> List of deviation in final product. In final 21 to this, this is the number of uh, complaints in 21 to in 2021. In 21 to subsequently in quarter four it is reduced to zero and the only two points one is where for uh, silicon point one and for uh, magnet. This list of completed action is for core and conditions. Here also man material machine method, method is there. Here also in machine standard method, the red the yellow color, that is also uh, 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 standard mesh. We have done some activities in standard mesh, now it is rectified. The, uh, the operating three standards. Three standards we have to follow cleaning and inspection. The two rounded figures, one is cleaning and one is uh, the second one is inspection. This is one point lesson. So here we will see not standard quality. In the first figure, the chiefs and pines are going there. So this is not, this is the practice is not standard. Now we have changed to standard practice and the mesh is changed and now no kinds of are together here. So this is the, this is one point. 
the guidance for education debating in government. Here, in first figure, uh, there was uh, in part of the activity where material being passes through to furnace, going to furnace. But due to some reason, moisture and the moisture also at the uh, 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 angle of the wind, the fines are being accumulated there. Up to 100 kg fines are being accumulated there. So we have some we have done some tiger doing some changes in the uh, angle of the wind so that now the fines is uh, reduced to 100 kg to 1 kg max. This is carbon related complaints we have received in 2021. So, in 2021, we have received 8 complaints doing some tiger and some activities. <coughs> now it is zero.
and the future plan. After a lot of brainstorming, we have zeroed on the scope of training to these five parameters. Safety, process, quality, basic engineering and systems. We wanted all our participants, all our operators, all our different members to be trained and to be on level 4. What is level 4? We will come to the next point. On all these four parameters. So now we are going to do that. This is the methodology. We start, we are evaluating through a skill matrix. Before that we don't have any scientific approach towards you know, what we are supposed to do. We prepare training calendar. We go ahead and give the training programs, but we thought, you know, for operator levels, let's prepare a skill matrix, a scientific approach. A lot of team members, the team leaders, the pillar chairman, from all of them, we sat together, we had a brainstorming, and then we came up with, you know, what the skill matrix should look like. I'll show you a glimpse of that one, you know, what exactly a skill matrix looks like. The evaluation of skill matrix, identify gaps of the skill matrix in today, the preparation of learning modules. Training calendar, training programs, post training evaluations, measuring effectiveness. If there is a gas one now, then again go to the same program. Yes. The next skill upgradation. So this is in short the scope and five parameters, and this is the evaluation or training methodology. Now this is a just it's not a just exactly the snapshot of various training programs conducted. I take a few uh, topics here. Who are the trainers? These are all our internal trainers. Number of participants in each training program, what is the duration of each training program, of and its count. So you can see there were total of 628 participants. Of course, there were almost close to 136 odd training programs. Duration and days. Here we are exclusively talking about the training programs conducted on Gemba or at the classrooms. I am not including the OPLs. This is how our skill matrix was designed. This is an example of a desk operator from the CHV MMM. Based on the five parameters, the scope that I have shown you, this is functional safety, quality based engineering and system. These were the questions set. For this parameter, this was the question set. And this is an example of the desk operator at the CHV MMM. And this, these are the index as you can see. This is should be for each skill set for this desk operator. This is should be and what is this actual skill set now and what is the skill gap? If there is skill gap, what is the training plan? If the training is plan has it been completed or not? It's trained, so it's completed. This is an example of one desk operator at CHP. Likewise, we have done for all the operators and all the people involved in the MMMs. This is just an example. And now, if I take you forward, we have plotted the same in the skill radar. If you can see the level 1, 2, 3, 4, this is level 1, 2, 3 and 4. 4 is, I know, I can do, I can teach. Level 1, I don't. So, this is basically, you know, the parameter set. And if I plot it against this skill radar parameter, for one particular operator mapped it, before training, this one is skill set. Safety, systems, this internet quality, this one is skill set. The red one or it should, should be four. The actual is actual is in the green and the gap is in red. This is pre-trained skill level, whatever skill data. Post training, this is a skill data. So before this training, this was the gap. After training, the gap has come down. Like what I showed you with the skill radar for one particular operator. Now if I take the entire mapping of one MMM, this is how it shows. For CHP one MMM, I have taken the average, the consultant reports of the MMM members. This was a pre-training skill radar and this is post-training. Pre-training, this was a skill gap, post-training. You can see improvement in the skills. Pictures of training program, you might have seen in all of the presentations, all the MMMs members have their own training programs happening. So as a ENT pillar chain person and my team, we are basically doing what is coordination between the trainer and the training. 
So you can see these are the picture representations of the daily program that happened at the Geba on the floor. I'm sure you might have seen all the pictures and other presentations. This daily program, the daily program, daily program. And these are some classroom trainings. This was a brainstorming session. We have some classroom trainings. The new concept coming out of that we can't do it on the Geba. We try to do it here, then we try to implement it in the Geba. As I showed you, the number of training uh, programs conducted is not inclusive of these OBLs. The one point lesson has been explained, has come up through in various presentations. So, the number of one point lessons in total, are they also being based on uh, uh, few, uh, capturing few OBLs. So, this is the total number of ideas that we have done until now, and this is the number of workers and food workers covered under the OBL. This is, uh, you know, a standard of how the OPL runs with the teacher becoming the student, student becoming the teacher, again the teacher becoming the student. This is how it runs. A future plan, if I look at, you know, my basic intention as a TN people achievement is to see to it that all the people involved in the TN post become you know, going across and getting across the organization, not many circles to be formed. Now my basic intention and my basic goal would be to see to it that all the people of the organization, off roads or on roads, should be multi skilled and should be able to be there on the level to where they can be the teachers. And these are the few training topics that I have identified, but I have said that training would be a continuous process. But having said that, I have taken certain uh, deadlines. We see to it that we do our best to achieve through the deadlines based on these parameters, but it's a continuous process. The continuous process of training would be happening. Now one of the support pillars and the last pillar is the office TPM to take us on the journey of office TPM and request Mr. Chandrasekhar who is the chairman of office TPM. Stores as well as in office, 
and in our canteen area. Just you can see what was what is the before, uh, the before what was the before and what is the after picture, the reorganization. Similarly, in office also we have affixed each and every nameplate and tagged with the different numbers where easily we can identify the office pictures and everything. Here, before and after pictorial is present. Visual management controls. These are the examples of visual management. As a part of Kaiser activities, we have identified some processes and we have taken two processes for the onward Kaiser activities. One of them is a purchase lead time. To make any improvement plan, first we have to visualize our process. For visualizing our process, just we have prepared a CIPOC. CIPOC is nothing but a how many it's stakeholders are there, what are the inputs and what is the process. It shows like a supplier, supplier who is a supplier, whether it's a document or it's a information. Similarly, input, what input do require for the processing of the, for completion of the process. And the process, conversion of purchase requisition to purchase order release. Output, what is the final output? And who is the receiver? At final, who is who is going to receive the document? Here it is a vendor. Based on this report, we have drawn here complete process flow of purchase requisition to purchase order in a swim lane. Since it is a lengthy process, so we have broken into two processes. One is the purchase requisition to technical recommendation of two from compared to statement to purchase order release. This process we have made it visual and thereafter this process has been broken into a different activities at a micro level so that we can know where is the time going and where is the time we can save by eliminating the idle loss and simplifying the process. These are the micro level activities. If you see here we can we have marked as the idle loss. This we can eliminate here also idle loss, this we can eliminate. In future, we have a plan to take a Kaiser and we can certainly reduce this lead time. This lead time we can certainly reduce. Now the second process is material, material receipt to GR preparation. Similarly, we have made SIPOP and make visualize our process. This process has been broken into a micro level activities. Here we can, we have identified one idle loss is there. In future, we will take a Kaiser and we will eliminate this loss. We have a very good practices of HR. Before COVID, we have an attendance system by car punching. Post COVID, we have we have improved, we have installed improvised. Thank you. Well, uh, this actually concludes the presentation by the village chief persons. We are going to go for a break now and as the schedule has been already announced. 
I request all the guests present here to go and meet in the uh, project office boardroom, take a small break, and then you know we can move ahead to the game uh, arrangements. So then, to one and all, all the guests here, and all our employees and all the people, the schedule has been shared with you. We are all requested to be assembling that.